device Is that you recognize me? Tall iced Americano decaf with the. Uh, yeah, can I just get one stevia and just like a little bit of half and half? And that'll be it. Alright, thank you. Uh, Brian. Alright, thanks. Should have said boom, right? Should have said boom. They get it fucking right. That Boomachino better come correct. Here we go. We're turning the corner. Here we go. Hey, Brian. How's it going, man? What's up, man? How are you? Pretty good. Man, you should have said boo, like, right before you said that. I was like... Why did, didn't this guy say boom? Uh, I, know. I, feel like, I feel like if I would have said that, he might misunderstand me and be like confused. Like, boo, brew? I don't know. <laughs> That's great, man. Um, yeah, so how's, how's life going right now? It's going good, man. Um, I'm just, uh, today I kind of had like a light day. I went for like a light jog. I was trying to take the day off, which I have a hard time doing because I always, uh, I always want to do something active, you know, especially when I'm fighting Wednesday. So it's hard to just sit around. But uh, I feel good. I sh I'm keeping my carbohydrate intake lower today, uh, trying to just stay busy. I did a couple of interviews, so that's been keeping me busy. Everything's doing pretty good. Is this, is this your first time fighting on a Wednesday? And how's that like? Yeah, this is my first time fighting on a Wednesday. It's kind of weird. Um, I mean, for right now, I really don't really don't even remember which day it is anyways because <laughs> i yeah, just been, you know tr i just been doing my thing like usual I and mean, most fighters are like that like we don't really have like like five day work week oh it's the weekend like you know most of us train different days anyways sometimes i train saturday sometimes sundays so it always uh changes so i'm pretty used to that uh but i think the weirdest part will probably be like the no fans mm -hmm. yeah and um uh... You don't have to cut that much weight, right? Uh, because the fight's at 145. Yeah, this fight's at 145, so I'm pretty excited about that because uh, I'm really looking forward to see how my power translates and just my energy overall, you know, being able to fight more close to my natural weight and, like, really not have to go through, like, a strenuous weight cut. Like, I thought it was going to be worse than it was. I was, like, 164, like, maybe two weeks ago. But now I'm hanging around uh 156 and a half like real healthy fully hydrated eating you know full meals and everything so i feel good mm -hmm. and uh what's your like walk around weight like how much uh are you at right now oh like i said i'm went right now i'm like 156 and a half 157 so i imagine i'll show up to fight week probably like around here i mean i'll probably maintain this weight and then just cut down from here yeah that's it that sounds like an awesome weight cut. I mean, that's like 10 pounds, and uh, I think it's yeah, very it's possible, so. Huh. Well, dude, and, uh, I, I, when I fight at Bantamweight, usually I show up like uh, 14 pounds above the weight. So, you know, usually I show up fight week like 150. So this is going to be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what kind of inspired you to take a short-notice fight? Uh, did you just like, um, you know, it's been crazy. Uh, but, like, what made you want to take this fight on short notice? Well, you know, I think, I think like, just wanting to stay active this year, and I had a lot of uh, – I had my vision, you know, to fight three or four times this year, go on a nice win streak, and, uh, you know, I wanted to end the year off fighting at MSG in November, but that's probably not going to happen because there's no fans or anything. So uh, I just want to get three, four good wins in this year and put myself back in the top 15, top 10. That's my plan. Uh, also, like, during this time of, you know, crisis and, and, and the pandemic, like, it's a little bit of, like, normalcy, you know, to actually have a fight coming up. It's it's nice to feel like I have my routine back, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, how's, like, the, you know, 
are you um, are you gonna fall on Fire Island maybe after this or um, you know I know that you've sang a lot about Fire Island so do you think that's a possibility? Uh, I I hope so. Thank you. Have a good one. I hope so, man. I am uh, I'm gonna have to make a another Fight Island song if that's the case. I'm gonna have to break out the ukulele. Uh, but I mean, it looks like. June, they're gonna start uh start fights on Fight Island. So I wanna, I, you know, this fight's happening May thirteenth. I'll be ready to fight again by probably late July. So uh, wherever they are in late July, like I'm in. I think either it's gonna be Fight Island or it's gonna be um probably at the Apex in Vegas. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, you said that you wanted to fight in Ireland in August, but do you see that happening anymore? No, because, you know, I don't even think they're going to go to Ireland. If they can't have fans in these arenas and stuff, I don't even think they're going to try to pull that off. So I think um, I think everything from here on out is going to be Fight Island, uh, probably Florida if they have to, and then also the Apex in Vegas if things open up there. You got it. And, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of things transpire with the Sean O'Malley callouts. Uh, you know, if you get a, like a dominant performance or like a maybe knockout or submission, do you see yourself calling out Sean O'Malley in the post fight interview? Oh uh, yeah, I think for me, if I can uh, get another big victory over a contender series guy, that just you know I'm the contender series killer. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that, he, he's the only one left. You know, he's the he's the big uh, contender series star. Uh, the UFC loves him, so uh, I'm gonna have something ready for him after this fight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how do you uh, feel about getting tested for the coronavirus? Because we saw Tony Ferguson get tested of it. You know, he didn't like it at all. So, like, um, are you kind of scared for the test or you know, how do you Man, feel? I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I'm like the biggest pussy other than being a fighter. I can't. <laughs> I, I, I'm like more nervous for this test than I am for anything else. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of like intrusive you know how they go into your nose like that but like i mean it looks it looks like for the most part it just feels weird it, it'll be pretty quick but uh definitely doesn't look fun yeah and uh you know another question i had for you is um you know looking at uh your next opponent hunter uh is there anything that you've seen from fight footage that kind of surprises you or do you see any weaknesses or holes in this game it's hunting season baby uh uh, I, I like to say, like, I'm going to be the hunter in this fight, you know what I mean? But uh, I see some holes, you know, I, I, I think he's, you know, he's undefeated, so he's coming in confident, but uh, I love that, you know, I, I like fighting undefeated guys because uh, it, it gives me that sense of, like, you know what, like, I want to give you that first loss. Uh, I think losses are learning lessons in this sport, you know, I've been through many. Um, I think uh, he's got a good wrestling background, but also he's been taken down in the UFC a bunch of times by Brad Gatona. So, you know, even with his wrestling background, I, I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a well-rounded fighter. I can implement wrestling if I want to. Uh, I think my striking is a little bit more diverse than his. And, um, you know, I think my jiu-jitsu is better altogether as well. I think, he, you know, he's good at taking the back, and, and, and he likes to find that rear naked choke. But otherwise, like, I feel really confident about this fight. Got it. And, uh, you know, with UFC 249 being on Saturday, you know, we're seeing a bantamweight clash between uh, Dominic Cruz, who's arguably the, the GOAT of the division, and Henry Cejudo. Uh, how do you see that fight going um, going on? Uh, Dominic Cruz, Henry Cejudo. I think, I think that fight's amazing, man. I'm really excited to see this fight, to be honest. I think, um, you know, Cruz being on that long layoff, like, it's going to be really interesting to see how, uh, how good Cruz looks, you know, against Henry Cejudo, especially, like, he came back against Mizugaki and looked amazing after that long yeah. layoff. So I feel like he has the potential to do it again, and I feel like that's the storyline, like, I just want to see uh, – I really want to see Cruz do it, you know. I think he can win a decision. I think he has the ability to outpoint Henry on the feet. He has the scrambling ability to avoid wrestling. And, and you know, Henry's going to have a little bit more power, I feel. But uh, Cruz is, is going to be a lot of trouble for Henry to find. You know, his, his movement, his angle is going to be uh, difficult to deal with. I, I think I got Cruz by decision. Dang, yeah. Um, I think Cejudo – I mean, I feel like a lot of people underestimate him. Uh, but, you know, just based off of uh, his personality, 
Uh, but, you know, then again, Cruz, um, you know, he's came back from long layoffs before, and we've seen him do good, like you said. So uh, I think that's an interesting fight for sure. Yeah, man. I, I think uh, if Henry's smart, he's going to come out the gate pretty uh, aggressive. I think he has to kind of uh, get in Cruz's face and kind of disrupt his rhythm and not allow Cruz to kind of find himself in the fight. Because once Cruz finds his rhythm and he finds, like, his footwork and his range, like, it's trouble for everybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, last question I had for you. This might be the most important question I've asked, but uh, how's that coffee tasting? Oh, it's um, unbelievable. That's the only thing, man. I went to Starbucks for a decaf because I honestly, like, I don't like decaf that much. I like, you know, but it's late right now. Mm -hmm. I just love coffee so much that I'm trying to have, like, my third coffee of the day. And uh, I got, like, Starbucks is, like, the only decaf that tastes legit. I feel like because they got the yeah. most expensive machines in the game, you know. Um I don't know. I, I I'd rather a uh, I'd rather it be caffeinated, but uh, I got you know make do with what I got. <laughs> well, thanks, uh, Brian, for chatting with us. I really appreciate it. And if you could save this uh, live so I can post it on YouTube later, that would be great. Yeah, man, for sure. I'll I'll, I'll post it up as uh, as soon as I get done. Got it. Sounds good. I'll see you All later. Right. Appreciate Boom. it. Take it easy, man.